Today, is there another path to beat inflation? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, this is post covering finance and property news. Well, just to be clear, inflation is a problem. It's a hidden tax and it tends to drain liquidity out of the system and very much hit many households and businesses and of course government as well. So when inflation gets out of hand, it needs to be brought back in quickly. You only have to look back to the 70s and 80s to see what happens when it's not done. But of course, the way that inflation is being squeezed out is to lift interest rates. And that in its turn means that some people, those with mortgages or other debts, are having to pay a lot more. And whilst the banks are passing some interest rate rises to savers, they're not doing it as generously. And interestingly, of course, banks are making quite good profits on the way through. But it's interesting that when you look harder at what's going on, there is a question to be asked as to whether the interest rate lever alone is necessary and sufficient, or even the most appropriate lever to pull to try and get inflation under control. Now, if you look at the UK, for example, here the government seems to be claiming that it's winning the fight against inflation. But it's true that we're not out of the woods yet. Inflation currently is still far too high, and the Bank of England has increased rates this last week to 5.25%, and it's also lowered its growth forecast. But the question you've got to ask yourself is, does it have to be like this? Well, if we look at Spain, for example, there's a great counterexample. Its inflation has just fallen to the 2% target. And it's interesting when you start looking at how it's done that, because they pulled levers quite differently. In fact, Carsten Young, a senior economist at the Institute of Public Policy Research Centre for Economic Justice, published an article recently in The Guardian. The reason, he said, is there was more forceful management of the economy. The Spanish government took quicker, more concerted action than the Bank of England or the RBA did. Spain capped energy prices by more than the UK, lowered the cost of public transport, taxed excess profits, and put a limit on how much landlords can raise rents. While also coming with costs, this kept inflation from spreading more widely and more persistently than elsewhere. Similar measures would have made a big difference here and in Australia too. In fact, one year ago at the Institute of Public Policy Research, they argued for a similar approach in the UK of using fiscal policy to reduce prices directly. But the call was only partially heated in the form of energy price support measures. And while in Spain, energy price caps are set to continue into next year, in the UK, the degree of support has already been lowered, covering fewer businesses than previously and is set to end completely in the autumn. Pubs, restaurants and other businesses have had to bear the full brunt of still very high electricity costs since this spring. And with the possibility of another energy price spike this winter, the government should give households and businesses certainty by extending energy price support measures and assure them that they'll be protected from another price shock. As it stands, the onus is now exclusively put on the Bank of England to stabilise UK inflation. The justification for it is that it is an overheating economy which has caused high inflation, too much money, chasing too few goods. But what we're seeing could alternatively be explained as pass the parcel inflation. This is a theory that rather than a red hot economy, inflation is the result of businesses and people trying to pass on higher costs to others if they can. Bank of England analysis partially confirmed this actually, finding that about three quarters of inflation stemmed from people passing on high energy and food prices at the end of 2022. But there was huge inequality in who was able to pass the parcel on inflation. The Bank of England recently highlighted that wages growth was concentrated in higher paying sectors such as financial 
and business services, while pay growth in lower paid sectors like wholesaling, retailing, hotels and restaurants had been broadly flat. Moreover, while there has been an all-present focus on wages, there has been all too little attention paid to the role of businesses in keeping price pressures up by passing the parcel. In fact, in analysis that the IPPR will be publishing later, they're going to show that a large chunk of businesses have either maintained or increased their profit margins in 2022. At the same time, many landlords were also able to raise their rents in line with inflation, something that the temporary rent control policy in Spain was able to contain. If the costs of inflation were fairly shared, businesses and landlords would also take a hit and absorb some of the costs, rather than workers taking most of the hit. In countries such as Japan, there is greater societal pressure for businesses to lower prices when input costs come down and to absorb some of the higher costs themselves. And France has taken policy action, making sure that food manufacturers and supermarkets play their part. Eminent institutions such as the Bank of International Settlements say that businesses reducing their profits is key for inflation to come down. Back in the UK, further Bank of England increases can ultimately be effective in bringing down inflation, as businesses will find it harder to put up prices and people harder to bargain for higher wages. But this comes at a high cost. It means fewer jobs, higher mortgage costs and lower growth in the future. A more balanced approach, including some of the measures like Spain's, would make this less necessary. The bank is very possibly already overdoing it. A lot of the interest rate hikes are yet to ripple through the economy. And the bank expects the effects of this to take a full one and a half years to feed through. This means that next year we might be in a situation where the economy is slowing down drastically with inflation already coming down more quickly. And there are some signs that this might be happening. The UK's largest fund manager is now betting on the UK going into a recession next year. And in the labour market, vacancies have started to fall and unemployment is ticking up and consumer sentiment is down. And meanwhile, global growth is slower than expected and so is unlikely to bring relief. So one year from now, past the parcel inflation might be over, but further Bank of England interest rates might also have killed the recovery. And he went on to say that it's not too late to change course. The bank should hold off from further rate rises and even consider lowering them soon. The government should follow Spain, doing more to hold energy prices down, making businesses play their part and supporting renters. And Spain shows that inflation can come down without the economy going to a tailspin. And the UK, and I would also argue Australia, should attempt the same. Now, I absolutely agree that leaving it to interest rates is a dumb strategy. Of course, it's the only one the RBA and other central banks have, but that doesn't make it right. But there's another very important point, which of course nobody wants to talk about too, and that is this. The ultimate reason why we have high inflation is because of the massive amounts of liquidity that was pumped into the economy, firstly after the global financial crisis, and secondly, through the COVID period. Ultra low interest rates, government stimulus, and even things like the term funding facility in Australia all created a massive supply of liquidity. That liquidity had to go somewhere. And guess what? It put inflation up. Now, the bottom line is this. Central banks are not only responsible for crushing people now as they try to address inflation using a very blank lever, but they were responsible for creating it in the first place. I haven't seen any real deep discussion of this amongst central bankers, or even a real acknowledgement that they created the problem in the first place. So it seems to me quite obvious that rather than just tying people up in knots, those with big mortgages, and other debts and businesses as well, and therefore putting pressure on a small proportion of the overall population in major Western economies. Central banks should be working in concert more with governments and looking at those other measures, just like Spain, 
to take the inflation pain away. But I'd also make another point, and that is that in my view, central banks should not be allowed simply to create massive amounts of liquidity when they think it's the right thing to do. There needs to be more checks and balances because ultimately it's about money supply. And if you increase the money supply, you ultimately increase inflation. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.